Welcome back to Gravity Rush. We're chasing after Cat Smash Brothers alt color now, still. Oh, now we have to... F we must fight ourselves to find our true selves. Thou art I, and... whatever. <laughs> Thou art art. Hold on, somebody uh, <laughs> saying barely comprehensible lyrics at us. I feel like Cat would be the most broken character in Smash Brothers, though. Uh, if can fly. <laughs> Well, if they wanted to make her accurate to the source material, then yes, she probably would be. Which is what they would do, because she's a DLC character. But if it's an original <laughs> Nintendo character, <laughs> then they can just pull shit out of their ass, even if it has nothing to do with anything about the character at all. Yeah, sure. You, you, got, you can have a gun. Yeah, whatever. T light yourself on fire uh, while going skyward. Yeah, that's something you do in Star Fox. Whatever. <laughs> it's because a lot of the, the characters directly from Nintendo games didn't have a lot to go on to begin with. Es especially back in the N64 and Melee days. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just... It's funny that you've got, like, two different kinds of characters in Smash Brothers. There's the ones that, you know, try extremely hard to be accurate to the source material. Uh, sometimes to the point of being detrimental gameplay-wise. And, and then it, there's Ganondorf. <laughs> and then there's Ganondorf. A lot of that <laughs> stuff. A lot of that stuff is from the earlier Smash games. To be fair. Yeah, but it's yeah. also like they don't change it. Too is also. The yeah. Thing. It's just like they won't make a. They won't a make a new set, set for, for Ganondorf. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. Ganondorf isn't completely a copy of Captain Falcon anymore, but he still kind of is. So don't give me that. <laughs> What they really need to be, what they really should do at this point, is give Ganondorf a completely new moveset and then just make Black Shadow from F Zero play as Ganondorf. But we already yeah, have do. too many sword users. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need to use swords. Like, have him use like. In fact, he in fact, he doesn't even use swords most of the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just like the one Twilight Princess fight, Princess. isn't it? Yeah, yeah I'd like yeah. him to use like the energy ball magic crap from like the the. Like uh, his Ganondorf Ocarina... set, give him a trident or something. Um. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, most of the Ganondorf fights actually do have him using a sword. It's just Ocarina of Time where he doesn't. So, um, I mean, Ganon. But yeah, but that's not, not Ganondorf. Ganondorf. It's not Ganondorf. Uh, well, yeah. well, no, there, there, there is artwork of uh, Ocarina of Time Ganondorf with like the trident and stuff. You could use that. Yeah, that would be interesting. I mean, Give him some reef so he can get over his slowness. <laughs> or they could just use the Hyrule Warriors design, which is just better. Anyway. I have to agree. That hair is marvelous. <laughs> I know, right? Or we could just add Lu Bu from Dynasty Warriors. It's the same thing, really. Yeah, but isn't Lu Bu technically like a real person, though? Because it's based off of actual history? I guess. Yeah. Um... Didn't, didn't stop them from adding a Kira Toriyama. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> Dragon Quest. Uh, Dragon Quest isn't based off of a real person, though. <laughs> wait, wait. Are you saying Dragon that the Warrior Dragon is Dragon Warrior isn't real? Wait. So wait. Hold on. Is I'm Dragon Quest jokes. canon? <laughs> I mean, one one, oh, yeah, one the of Dragon the skins Warrior. for the hero is the Dragon Quest three guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dragon yeah, Quest. Yeah. So yeah. basically, Goku is in the game. Um, no, he's, no, we, he's, we've been over this. We're not doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's ten years commentary. I mean, his hair is nothing like Goku. So his if you're gonna, more Gohan. All Goku, though. We went into this tangent in this very commentary. commentary. Yeah, yeah so we're not like do, we're earlier. not doing it again. So okay, like we've okay. never repeated tangents before. No, we repeated tangents before, and I mean, to be fair, we went on but, two Jurassic Park tangents in this playthrough as well. Yeah. And I was listening back to the Resident Evil 1 commentary just a couple of days ago. We mentioned, we bring up that Zero was just released a few months after, and then fucking, we forget about it and don't bring up the same fucking point four parts later. Oops. Our memories, our oh. memory spans are fucking goldfish. Well, that's what happens when you have breaks between parts. <laughs> Recording sessions, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, did that, did that dis second discussion happen at like a part 11? Or something to that I effect. Don't recall the exact part number. I just know what happened twice in the same commentary. Oops. Yeah, I guess. You well, know, j j just so the audience knows, we have breaks between recording sessions. Obviously, we don't do the entire game at once. That would be no, no. awkward. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we'll take like a week or two between sessions, depending on things. Or if it's a long game, it could be 
multiple weeks. If it's a guest, a sometimes it can be like a month and a half. In the case, uh, in the case of Mass schedule, Effect, hopefully. I think we did entire games between parts sometimes. Yeah. I lost track, and at that point, I was just doing 14 roulettes in the middle of commentary. Ah, you were doing a TED. I was do yeah, I was doing a TED. You were on the moon buggy, and... I'm sorry. Weren't using, I'm not weren't playing using the Magic the Gathering Arena at this very second. What are you talking about? TED, let's check your Discord and see if that's a lie. <laughs> Oh, I hide that shit for that exact. <laughs> you reason. can hide that shit. Yeah, you can. Hide you can. That. Oh up, man, you can put Tell up a me. custom game title if you want. Oh, you can do that too. But you can also just go to your settings and just hide whatever you're playing. It's nobody's business on what I'm doing. <laughs> Ted, we know you're. I mean, sorry, John, we know you're playing Final Fantasy XIV. No, not now. I was doing that before we started, but oh, I got hung up too. I was like, yeah, I got time for a dungeon. Oh wait, the seal doesn't know what they're doing. I'm <laughs> gonna be here for a while. Oh no, it's close to five o'clock. Uh, ha, ha, one of those, huh? You have my pity. But also, it's kind of funny. Um, it's, it's fucking comedy gold. Well, now she's green. Well, she's using her power. Oh, okay. So she's still the Defeat the, the mysterious now. woman. Hmm, okay. You must defeat yourself to overcome yourself, or... Fun thing about Silver the Hedgehog that I only found out recently is that his glowy bracelets and leg pieces were supposed to shut and not glow when he wasn't using his powers, but Sega just didn't animate it. <laughs> so they were perpetually open and glowing, except in, like, one doesn't animation set. Doesn't really matter. No, it's just awkward. <laughs> like... They meant to have it work a certain way, but outside of, like, one specific animation set, it doesn't. So... Well, that's the kind of thing you drop if you're rushing on time, you know? Like, a visual thing that doesn't really matter to the overall course of the game. Like, that, you... If you can't get that game done on time, you stop working on that kind of stuff first. And then get to working on... Like the the stuff that will finish make, in the air. <laughs> yeah, well, the stuff that will make the game as well as it can. In the case of Sonic 06, that was a lost cause. But uh, um, I wouldn't say it was a lost cause exactly. Well, that was my favorite Wii U game, Sonic Lost Cause. <laughs> <laughs> I I wouldn't say it was a a lost cause exactly. If they had a bit more time to cook, they probably could have smoothed out the gameplay enough to be enjoyable. But I think they would have needed at least like a year, considering how that game ended up, though, and I don't think that they had that kind of time, well, they no matter had how many a, corners they cut. They had to a degree, uh, partially did, done what exactly I was talking about, but they couldn't polish up that particular build in time, so the final product ended up being a, a, an earlier build than the one that they were working on. So, they reverted to a stable but older build, Stable. <laughs> Stable, relative, yes, all things being relative. Um, so what we got was a less complete version than what they were working on, but also one with fewer bugs. As far as we're aware, anyway. Mm -hmm. We can only go off of what was given to us. Yeah. It's uh, interesting to think about Sonic 06's development, but god, god damn, that game is just... Yeah, the development is actually way more fascinating than the actual game itself. Yeah. It's just, you know, Sonic 06 is the game that just keeps on giving, you know? It's, 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 it's kind of magical. This, by the way, is exactly how Sonic the Hedgehog character fights go. Well, no, off. because this one's been going on for more than five, more than thirty seconds. So has it? Because win or lose, they're over in thirty seconds. That felt like thirty seconds. No, it was like a good three minutes. The entire fight was a Sonic tangent. Did she just defeat her shadow and awaken her persona? Sorta. Wait, is now she's part like Raven though? Because no. it looked like she was part Raven though. Like, no. he had paws and stuff. Don't you mean panther? Oh, no. Oh, are we getting a new power? Yep. Just for... Oh, my God. 
at this point in the game. Yikes. I mean, these powers the game, are yeah, cool. Seriously. They should have just... Yeah, I know they really are. But oh, this is Bayonetta. Like, holy shit. This is just straight oh, yeah, up ba Bayonetta. Straight Bayonetta. Yeah. I don't remember Bayonetta's panther form being able to run through the sky, but okay. Well, no, that's what you turn into the bird for, but it's also like, this is just straight up one-to-one -one Bayonetta, except for flying in the air with the panther. Rawr. But again, another another power up so late into the game that you likely won't it, be able to fully it, it's utilize. Kind, it's, well, it's kind of more just of a temporary super mode thing. Oh, so at the end of the game, we get our devil trigger. Functionally, yes. Oh, Astral Chain, nice to see you. <laughs> what? Um, Astral Chain um, has a very similar thing that happens where you don't get your super mode until like the second or third to last mission in the game. Oh. It's a really, really fun game, don't get me wrong, I really enjoy it, but um, it's really weird that um, they introduce this super mode where if you play it, they like play this unique theme song, even and stuff like that. It's just, it's wild. Huh. So, do we ever find out what the deal with the bird and the cat are? That was just a mega super ultra form for the DLC thing that Raven did. Because she has, she, she obviously has her bird form right there. Oh, I I get it. What I'm asking is like, who is the like, the fake cat? Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> And the bad guys decided not to kill us. Well, they're kind of not bad guys. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Oh no, not these guys. That the, he's talking the, the, about. Well, maybe they maybe they saved us. They could have said so, at the very least. My job here is done. What do you mean your job here is done? You didn't do anything. What on earth? Is he trying to freeze time? Yes. So that she won't die because it's a timed thing, right? Uh, yeah. Oh man, Marvelous. I got it. My daughter doesn't have to die if I freeze time, and she can't get worse. <laughs> okay. She also can't get better either. Well, yes, but he doesn't care. <laughs> oh, my beautiful Nora. <laughs> Uh. Ominous Latin chanting. Is Every it, good video game needs ominous Latin chanting. Is it just me, or do anime villains always have the most pointless plots? Like, the most pointless do goals tell. in the universe. Goals that you, defeat you mean, themselves you mean, you mean besi conceptually. You, <laughs> you, you, you mean besides the times where the 90% of the time where they just have a big god complex? This word no, including those perfect. times, because they can't even have a god complex correctly. If only the world were as beautiful <laughs> oh, you as idiots. me. You're doing it wrong. This is how you have a god complex. <laughs> I mean, it's fine if you're like Kefka and you're literally insane, but there. But most of the time, it's like. Uh, uh, well, hold on. I wouldn't necessarily equivocate. Kafka's god complex through his methods. I think having godhood is just a sweet bonus he got. Well, <laughs> yeah, his, uh, I, I mean that—that's the thing. Kafka didn't really have a goal, and that was—that was part of what made him go. He just—he right. he just wanted to watch the world burn. But like, okay, which is also a cliche. But, and, and you, you know, know, Sephiroth was being like halfway controlled by a space alien who didn't give a fuck about planet Earth. Okay, that's fine too. Um, uh, let's see. Ultimicia wanted to compress time because reasons. Because okay, what was her methods? What was her? I've goal? heard like there's some like <laughs> extra outside the plot source material that says like she was dying or something and didn't want to or whatever. But... So she so she's worse, Kuja. Oh well, Kuja basically he had a goal originally. But then he found out he was dying and went a little... He, he became an angry teenager. He lost his shit for about half an hour and then realized yeah. he had lost his shit. Destroyed a planet, <laughs> as we all do. <laughs> and then, it's okay, though, because only Bugs lived on it, so he can join the team like, later. I'll give Kuja a pass because he was only, like, 
batshit insane for a very short period of time. All things considered, he destroyed Terra, you have your final dungeon. You fight him, snap him out of it, and then he realizes that he was wrong and helps you out before he dies. And you know Also, to be a bit fair, Terra was meant to die, it was Garland who was keeping it on life support for no real reason. Yeah. Well no, because no, remember the original plan was yeah, to transfer everyone over to Gaia. To transfer, or at least terraform Gaia so that Terra can Live survive. Again. Yeah, but yeah. it's one of those... Blowing up Terra wasn't necessarily a quote-unquote big loss considering it was... Transfer all my clones to the planet Krypton. Krypton? <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> sure, sure thing, Footy Slipper, uh... Uh, set them you, man, also, the good guys <laughs> the, the good guys managed to fork kids TV all of the uh, genomes out of Terra. But we're getting sidetracked. My point is that a lot of anime villains just have these plots that basically amount to I have no idea what I'm doing, but I need to sound dramatic, so I'm going to make a big speech about it. Um, and it's like... I don't know. Um, it feels like a lot of the time, the writers for these games and anime are substituting weird vagary for narrative depth, if that makes any sense. Oh yeah, because it, they're likely writing it as they go along and answer questions later. Yep. You know. Right, but you know, even if you're doing that, you can, even if it's just in your own head, sit down for half an hour and come up with a plausible like end game for your villain. It doesn't take all that long, but it feels like... Only if it sells well. It feels like the vagary itself is mistakenly put forward as a selling point for the character. Like, the fact that they're... It's a, mi it's a mystery. Like, the fact that their goal makes no sense is supposed to be something that makes them deeper, and I just... No. That does, it's not how it works. Please stop. And... Uh, this, is, this is a weird thing to say, but I think part of it actually comes from this uh, slight cultural quibble the Japanese have where if you over explain things you're being a bit obnoxious well that no that's that's real life too have you never heard of mansplaining <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I can't believe I just said like real life as if Japan wasn't a real place. I'm that's, so sorry. That's I meant to say the West. That's that's more <laughs> that's more of a condescension thing. But the way people use that word in common conversation kind of loses that 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 um that that bit of that bit of context a lot of the time in the argument that follows. Um, what I'm talking about is more like. Uh, okay, if you were talking to someone in Japan, it would probably be a bit of a bad idea to, um, like, make extra super sure that they understand what you're talking about. Um. Yeah, because you might run the risk of, uh, well, again, going back to being con condescending. You know, give give your audience the benefit of the doubt. I think it's, I think it's more just because of the way their language works you're generally safer assuming that they have a grasp of subtext in general because um, there's a lot of uh, working out what specific things in a sentence mean just in the general flow of conversation in Japanese so you wouldn't necessarily need to explain a lot um, it's a little difficult to put this into words though um, but essentially, it's a, it's like it's not a huge uh, interaction problem, but it is a big enough social quirk that my Japanese lesson CDs actively warned me about it. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, and I'm wondering if like maybe that plays into the way they write their pop culture too. Uh, essentially. I might be explaining this poorly. I probably am explaining this poorly. <laughs> probably. It's okay. I always assume I am, I'm explaining something poorly. That way, it's not my fault. Yeah, I'm <laughs> trying... I don't understand. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, very precisely explain why you shouldn't very precisely explain things to another culture. <laughs> and it's, uh... It's failing. Just conceptually, it's failing. So... Did these two just, like, suddenly realize that their dad is batshit insane or something? 
No, our friend who became the magical girl remembers us now, apparently, which is nice. <laughs> so, this was fake final boss, what, like six? Something like that, yeah. But uh, <laughs> that won't be the la that won't be the last fake final boss either. We'll be seeing a few more, I guess, from the in the route to the end game next time on Gravity Rush.